So a few days ago, I watched Gladiator 2. I emphasize a few days ago because it's already started to slightly fade from memory, which in of itself says something, I guess. The movie joins a long list of sequels or remakes to classic films. Ben-Hur remake? Yep, that's already been done. The Wizard of Oz prequel? Yeah, there's been two now, I think. And Gladiator 2 is a particularly bizarre case because it's Ridley Scott himself doing the sequel. The man who has been down this road before when he decided to smear excrement all over his legacy with an alien sequel 40 years later, and who didn't learn his lesson with Blade Runner when for that movie he gave the sequel to a younger director in his prime. Although it seems the critics are a big fan of Gladiator 2. Gladiator is such a strange film to have a sequel. The original was a self-contained, one-and-done, extravagant, big-budget blockbuster. Why does it need a sequel? I don't mind another Sword and Sandals epic from Scott, nobody quite does it like him, even maybe in the same fictional universe, but why connect it directly to that particular story in the first film? I don't know. But the result of Scott's endeavours is a film that I think the kids today would call mid. That's what it feels like. It's Gladiator from 2000, but everything is mid. Everything is okay. And it is okay. I wasn't particularly moved by the film, although I would say I'm not a fan and I wasn't won over. But I'm sure there will be many who will enjoy the movie. It's like an R-rated superhero movie. Big CGI set pieces and all, except the lasers are swapped out for swords. I was sitting there watching the movie and loads of questions came into my head. Like, why are two gladiators from ancient Rome performing martial arts? Why does one of the actresses look like she's had a plastic surgery disaster in 200 AD? But then something interesting happened, around about when Denzel Washington popped up. He came on screen, and the movie paused. And remarkably, Denzel climbed out of the frame and walked up to me in my seat, and he said, My man, you gonna sit there and expect an accurate historical epic from an old fart who doesn't care anymore and made Napoleon into a whiny emo boy? Why don't you just sit back and enjoy a popcorn flick? So I said, okay, I'll try. And he said, my Nero. And he climbed back into the movie. And that's really what it is. It's a loud, fast-paced action blockbuster made as a crowd pleaser for casual audiences on a Friday night. I know you can make that argument for the original too, but the quality between the two films is night and day. I mean, literally. There are flashbacks to the original movie and it's noticeable how much more vibrant the original movie was. I can't stand this dark grey colour grading Scott has had in his recent films. I am trying to be kind to this movie. I know people will say, just stop moaning and enjoy it. But if this movie's quality hits the standards of what good blockbuster fare is, then sorry to say what standards have dropped dramatically. But anyway, like I said, it's made to be a crowd pleaser and it contains all the eye-rolling hallmarks of a legacy sequel. Surprise cameos from the original, only to be killed off. Famous lines being repeated and glorified like, what we do in life echoes for eternity. Famous shots and poses recreated like when Maximus runs up the stairs to the arena or that thing he does when he picks up the sand. Standard props from the original being deified, which in this movie's case was Maximus's body armour. But I would argue, for most of the movie's runtime, it's just a remake of the original. All the beats are there. Opening with a battle where the Romans conquer a people. The main character being a military man whose family are killed and he is placed into slavery. He seeks revenge and climbs up in popularity in the arena as a gladiator, and so on and so forth. The original had about three main fights in the arena. The chariots, the tiger, the big fella. The ones in this one are representative of Scott's recent lack of restraint. One fight with CGI monkeys, another where they flood the Colosseum and recreate a naval battle, and one with a rhino. The fight with the monkeys was dumb. The one with the water and the sharks was a ridiculous CGI fest that was treated as a bit part in the film instead of a colossal event. But the one with the rhino was pretty good. But even saying that phrase, they flooded the Colosseum, it sounds cooler saying that, imagining the Romans doing that, than what we actually saw. And to think the set pieces were stuff Scott wanted to do in the original but couldn't, is a shudder-inducing thought. It's a really silly film. The more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm starting to hate it. It's lazy, in spite of Scott's unbelievable work rate. You've got characters in 200 AD saying phrases like, hose them down. 
and an inscription above Maximus's armour written in plain English. The movie does deviate in the last half an hour or so from its remake shacklings. It takes some wild turns in the story, just becoming straight up insane, like all the characters are high on coke, and Denzel's character just decided to become a moustache twirling Looney Tunes villain out of the blue. And I thought that was where the movie was most interesting, at least it was different, but it was really rushed. The dialogue was piss poor. You heard some of it in the trailers. You will be my champion. I will not be your champion. Yeah, riveting stuff. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if the script was written by asking ChatGPT to shit out the same script for Gladiator, but just make it worse, and include a character where Denzel Washington plays the same guy he played in American Gangster, but in a dress. And then Denzel showed up to set thinking, this crazy old man is really making this film? And just decided to do whatever he wanted. I'm glad you're having fun, Denzel. All the shots of him acting erratic and randomly laughing were really funny, but for the wrong reasons. You can just tell that the guys behind the cameras, they just saw best supporting actor nominations for him because he was just doing all sorts of weird stuff, laughing randomly. He was the most memorable performer, and it is one of those performances where critics will say he was a scene stealer and he was chewing the scenery, but I don't know, it was cringy, and like a lot of elements in this film, I wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling anything. There's a 1950s workman-like feel of this movie that is personified by Scott's recent filmography. All the elements are there, but like Alien Romulus, which I reviewed recently, it just lacks a soul. It is a good movie to watch in the background with your mates during a party or something, but it's a shame if Scott thinks that is befitting of a Gladiator sequel. I watched some of the first film again and it's remarkable how the action scenes can get your heart pumping how the rousing score gets your adrenaline going, even now. The music in particular was such a non-entity in Gladiator 2. The movie is not content with piggybacking off Gladiator and reminding you of the original every 10 minutes, but it screws up that movie now as well. Turns out that the kid Lucius is actually the son of Maximus. Why? Why does he need to be his son? It all still works, the story still can be done the way it was, he could be someone who looks up to Maximus' legacy. He met the guy, he was inspired by him. Why does he need to actually be Maximus' son? What's next? Maximus is the bastard child of Marcus Aurelius. And you're sitting there thinking, how can that even work? Lucius was already a kid when Maximus came to Rome as a slave. But then you remember that he was a general before that. And then you realise, oh. So what they're saying is, is that while Maximus had his wife and kid, he was also banging Lucia on the side. But wasn't the entire emotional drive of the original movie that Maximus' wife and child were killed, and he will have his vengeance in this life or the next? Don't you see, Ridley, how having him ruffle Lucia's feathers undermines that? That it makes him out to be a dishonest adulterer who didn't question Lucia on who her baby's father is, since, you know, you and I have been getting the hanky-panky on. Is that my kid, or is there something you need to tell me? Speaking of Lucius, I have to say I just wasn't buying Paul Mescal as the gladiator. The acting from the cast, from all, isn't bad, but he as the main character was missing that spark. Sure, nobody's convinced that Russell Crowe is a Spaniard, but Crowe has that streetwise pub brawl element to his personality that translates well into a gruff military man turned gladiator. Mascal looks like he's just come out of a £50 an hour high class gym and sounds like he's about to give a lecture at Cambridge University on sinus blockage. And his character does not earn the way he becomes the leader of the slaves. When Maximus did it, he was already a military commander. He gained more and more respect from the slaves for what he did in the arena and he organically became a leader. Remember that epic scene where Crow's walking past the crowd and they chant his name and the music was on fire? Nothing in this movie comes close to giving you that level of goosebumps. Here the kid just sort of becomes the leader, just because. I kind of feel sorry for Pedro Pascal. It almost feels like he reached into his character's emotional state and tried to convey the subtleties of a general realising the futility of his actions, a character who's a key figure in this game of emperors. He was probably asking 50 questions on set and Scott was like, Hey man, take it easy, we're just making a movie here, no need to think too hard. They should have centred the movie around his character, 
given the rebellion plot more muscle, and you could have also had the gladiator stuff on the side. There's actually a really good story there in the muddied waters, about a small band of characters having enough of tyrannical twin emperors, but that would require effort from the screenwriters, but what can you expect from the writer of The Day the Earth Stood Still remake and Scott's Napoleon? Ironically, the thing holding the movie back was that it was about a gladiator. I am not entertained. Were you? Let me know in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching.